Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Jacqueline McQueen's YouTube channel. Welcome if this is your first time. If you're returning, thank you for coming back. This is going to be episode three of when to keep your mouth shut. Okay, hope you have your pen and your papers. And so you can write down the scriptures if you want to, or just to look at it. Okay. If your words would destroy a friendship, Proverbs 16 and 28. How many of you have friends? Not associates, friends. Usually, is one hand and then it could be maybe four maybe three maybe two or just maybe one you have to think about it when it comes to friendship for me hard times times when you can't even make a dollar because you don't even have the 15 cents. How many of you have those type of friends that have been there for you financially, that have been a rock for you, that have stuck up for you if your name came in a negative conversation. I have a friend and we're still friends. We've been friends since elementary school. Her name is Kathleen. And something happened that really hurt me. And I felt she could have really handled the situation better. So I decided that I ain't dealing with her no more. But then my friend Norma, she was my maid of honor at my wedding. She said to me something very important. She said, Jackie, Kathleen has been your friend since you were in elementary school. In essence, Kathleen knows you. Do you really want to throw away that friendship? I thought about it and then for whatever reason the years came between us and we didn't see any each other or talk to each other but thank God for Facebook because now that's my girl Kat. Kat and I have been through some stuff together so this is just me as a basis if you have friends from when you were in elementary school, you knew each other, you grew up together, that always doesn't apply to friendships. But you don't want to hurt that person's reputation with your mouth. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. And you don't want to destroy a friendship. You don't. Because when I think about it, my good friends, we have had some knockout, ball out, woo, my friend Roz, and she's dead now. <laughs> we went through it. But when I tell you, we hadn't been speaking for years. I don't even remember what we argued about. But when my mother died, Roz was right there, as if nothing had ever happened between us. So value friendships. Some friendships, you got to realize that, are they conducive to your growth? Because some friends, you know, <laughs> you all know. So think about if your words will destroy a friendship. 
And even if it's a type of friendship that you no longer need to be around, you've outgrown that friend, don't destroy it. You know, well, I used to be her friend, but child, I done moved on. Okay. 14. When you are feeling critical, James 3 and 9. Ladies. You know we can go there. You know we can go there. I can't think, I can't not think, I cannot speak for any other nationality other than a black woman because that's what I am. Baby, we will start at the head and go all the way down to the pinky toe and be very critical. I don't know what it is. Why? Why we could be like that? I don't. I don't know. I really don't understand that. But black women, hmm, we could rip you up in a minute and don't even think about it. And then if we forgot anything, we left something now. And I thought I. I don't know. But even though this is like a side note, let's learn to applaud women. I'm not going to just say black women. I can't say just black women. Have you ever seen a woman and she got on a nice pair of shoes, her nails look nice, her hair is popping. Have you complimented a woman lately? Have you gave a compliment to her? Hmm. Think about that. Critical. Critical. Don't do that. If you can't speak without yelling. <laughs> Didn't I tell you to get over here? Sit your behind down. A soft answer turns away wrath. I'm learning this more and more as I get older. This voice that I'm using carries more weight than a because this tone makes you really lean in to listen. Yelling goes over your head. Be like, oh, well. But a moderate tone of talking, speaking is better than yelling, okay? And that's in Proverbs 25, and 28 when it's time to listen proverbs 13 and 1 <clears throat> there was a saying i wish i could remember it verbatim but i can't <clears throat> but in essence what the statement was saying is that listen without responding because what happens is that we'll hear something, but then we immediately respond. And usually the respond is a defense mechanism where guarding our heart, guarding our reputation, guarding our feelings, it's very hard to hear negative things about ourselves. It's very hard. And it's very hard to listen to negative things that are said about our character, our uh, personality. It's very hard. But the giver of it, I'm sorry, I'm sitting at my computer chair and I'm sliding out. <laughs> 
the hard part, not the hard part, the person that is delivering any information about you, I pray that they're giving it to you in love. They're not talking to you in a condescending tone. That when they're speaking to you, that even though it's the truth about you, that it's received with love. I think of what came to me was about when Nathan went to David and he said to him how this uh, man had a little ewe lamb and it was taken away from him. Don't quote me on this because I'm going on not verbatim how King James Version says it, but in essence, Nathan went to David and told him about a wrong that had been done to a man concerning his lamb. And David, whoever this is, you know, get him, and, and they deserve this. And Nathan said, it's you, David, because Nate, David, has slept with Uriah's wife. Had Uriah come in from the war, David was the king. David was supposed to be out there fighting. He and he and his in his house. He chilling. And he looked and he saw Bathsheba, who was Uriah's wife. He said, yo, who's that little cutie? They said, oh, that's Uriah's wife. He said, oh, tell her, come on. <laughs> Bang. Bathsheba got pregnant. So, now David was the king. He could have requested her without, you know, trying to do something on the down low. So now he going to do Shady Grady, I'm going to cover this up. Uh, send Uriah from out of the war. you fighting. Send Uriah. Tell him to come home. Been gone too long. He need to be with his wife. But Uriah was very faithful. And he believed in King David and he was for the cause when he came home he didn't come home and sleep with his wife he came home I think he said he slept at the foot or something he didn't sleep with his wife so when David found out he didn't sleep with his wife it's like oh man this chick is pregnant what the heck we gonna do I know what I'll do I'll send Uriah to the front of the war and he'll get killed. And that's what David did. Uriah died because David wanted to hide his sin that he slept with that man's wife. So when Nathan came and spoke to David and how he did it, he did it real I'm not, okay, I, cool is not a word I should really use, but the way he did it, he gave him a parable, parable, and he painted the picture of how a man was, was wronged because his little Hugh lamb, and David immediately, oh, you shouldn't have did that, and that's when Nathan hit him and said, it's you, David. You slept with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. Now she's pregnant, and that firstborn child is going to die. I kind of went out on a, um, a tangent <laughs> on listening, <laughs> but y'all know I kind of get off track a little bit. 
But y'all can stay with me because you know I'll get back on track. So listening, Nathan had David's attention because of how he painted the picture. That made David sit back and listen to everything that Nathan was saying. And then Nathan let him know, David is you. So there are things about us that real true friends see and they can start off things with a parable or something nice to get your attention so you'll listen. Because being critical, mm -mm, that is very hard to accept that anything that someone says negative about that, it's, it's a process and you have to practice it. Practice receiving it, be receptive, but don't take it from everybody because a lot of people say things because they're jealous of you, okay? The story about Nathan and David, there was something I was getting ready to say. Oh, how did Nathan find out? Because Nathan was a prophet. And God is a revealer of secrets. Okay? So, listen. Recently, I had a conversation with one of our overseers. And she said something to me that someone said to me, like, over 20 years ago, about why... I have such a love for newborns. And she said to me that your desire for newborns is that you feel needed. And something about because your heart has been hurt. And when she said that, I thought about this, this guy, no, he's dead now. His name was Spencer. He said, how come you always like to have babies? And I said, I don't know. I said, you know, I thought because it was the nurturing, I like to introduce them to new things and all that. You know, the, the aha moment when you give them a taste of a, a food that they've never had besides formula and pablum. And I thought about it and I had to let it come out of my mouth and say, you're right. Because in caring for children, I know I'm going off, but I'm going to say it because it's a deliverance for me. Whew. Parents have hurt me. They have hurt me. Yes, they were paying me for the service to care for their children, but in the interim, they didn't treat me right. Some of them didn't pay me. <laughs> Matter of fact, a lot of them didn't pay me. And they abruptly would take their children. And instead of saying the real reason why you don't want me in your child's life to care for them, you just took them and didn't say anything. I never had my final goodbyes for my children. <clears throat> and and it's true she said that with a newborn or a baby that will cover up the hurt that I have received from past parents and I received it I received it and how she started we started the conversation, we was ordering stuff from Amazon, child. <laughs> now, you know I'm the Amazon queen, right? I've kind of pushed Walmart to the side. I don't even deal with them no more. And we were doing the ordering, and then that's when she bought it. Uh, we were talking, and I told her that I said to my husband, it's time for a baby. And she said, why? You got children right here now that love them, love you, and they need parenting and love and nurturing from you. 
centralize on the ones that are around you and who God has given you for now. Don't worry about a newborn. I was like, I. <laughs> okay, so let us learn to listen. Not always when something is said to react. Listen, there's scripture that says, be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. Listen, okay? If you may not have to eat your words later, Proverbs 18.21. <laughs> How do we all know about that? Oh, that's not what it is. Those words are hard <laughs> to eat back. Oh my God, they are, they are. So let's be careful when to keep your mouth shut. Okay. Last one. Nah. We're going to leave that, and this is going to be one, two, three. This is going to be a part four, okay? Thank you for watching Jacqueline's YouTube channel. It's really been a blast for me because in doing these videos, it's a help for me also. It's a help. I have a lot of information, and I want to share it. I do want to share it. There are a lot of nuggets that I have. And um, this is stuff that, if you don't listen to it now, years later, when I'm no longer here, which will be years, be able to look at that. And I said, wow, that lady, she gave us something to really think about. You know, my desire is to encourage, empower, uplift anyone and everyone that comes into my path. So YouTube is an avenue to me to, what's the word I'm looking for? I tell you, honey, that's a senior moment. <laughs> to reach millions. To reach millions. So everybody have a very good day. We're getting ready to go to the 4th of July this Sunday. Be safe. Wear your mask. Thank you for stopping by Jacqueline's YouTube channel. Please like, share, subscribe, comment. Y'all, please hit that, that, that like button. Okay? I appreciate it. I appreciate the views. But push the like button. Give me a comment. Let me know. Do you like it? Do you don't like it? suggestions. Okay? Everybody have a good day. Bye-bye.